Good morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Yesterday, I shared with you that my wife Sophie was being tested for COVID-19, and that test did come back positive. Sophie's symptoms remain mild, but we are following medical advice and taking every precaution. She will remain in isolation for the time being. We are thinking about all the families across the country who have received the same diagnosis, but we are in good hands. We have full confidence in Canada's health officials and professionals. This means that, upon my doctor's recommendation, I will remain in self-isolation for 14 days. I want to be clear, I have no symptoms and I'm feeling good. And technology allows me to work from home. Of course, it's an inconvenience and somewhat frustrating. We are all social beings, after all. But we have to do this because we have to protect our neighbours and our friends, especially our more vulnerable seniors and people with pre-existing conditions. We are following medical advice, as should all Canadians. And on that note, I want to thank all of Canada's health professionals and the public health agency who are doing an incredible job supporting and looking after all of us. Yeah. Je vous ai informé que mon épouse Sophie avait subi un test pour la COVID-19 et le test s'est avéré positif. Les symptômes de Sophie demeurent faibles, mais on suit les recommandations du médecin et on prend toutes les précautions nécessaires. Elle demeurera donc en quarantaine pour une durée indéterminée. Nous pensons à toutes les familles d'un bout à l'autre du pays qui ont reçu le même diagnostic, mais nous sommes entre bonnes mains. Nous avons pleinement confiance dans les professionnels de la santé et les autorités de la santé publique du Canada. Ça veut dire que, suite à la recommandation de mon médecin, je suis en isolement pour 14 jours. Je veux être clair, je n'ai aucun symptôme. Je me sens très bien. Je travaille de la maison par précaution. De nos jours, la technologie nous permet de travailler à distance. C'est sûr que ce n'est pas idéal et c'est un peu frustrant. Nous sommes, d'après tout, tous des êtres sociaux. Mais c'est ce qu'on doit faire pour protéger nos voisins, nos amis, surtout les personnes âgées, les plus vulnérables et ceux qui souffrent de conditions de santé. Nous suivons la vie des médecins comme tous les Canadiens devraient faire en ce moment. Je veux en profiter pour remercier tous les professionnels de la santé et l'Agence de santé publique qui font un travail exemplaire pour nous appuyer. Je veux maintenant vous faire part des démarches que le Canada entreprend pour assurer votre sécurité et protéger votre santé. Hier, je me suis entretenu avec plusieurs dirigeants internationaux, dont le président Trump des États-Unis, le premier ministre Johnson du Royaume-Uni et le premier ministre Conte de l'Italie. J'ai également participé à la rencontre du comité spécial du cabinet sur la COVID-19 et j'ai tenu une rencontre téléphonique avec le ministre des Finances sur la situation économique actuelle. J'ai aussi eu la chance de faire le point avec le président et chef de la direction de la Chambre de, de commerce du Canada et le président du Conseil du travail du Canada. Ce matin, j'ai participé à une rencontre du cabinet et j'ai parlé au président Macron de la France. Mes conversations se poursuivront dans les prochains jours. Plus tôt aujourd'hui, les ministres Blair, Haidu et Garneau ont annoncé que le Canada recommande aux Canadiens d'éviter les, les voyages non essentiels à l'extérieur du pays. Nous avons également annoncé que la saison des croisières était suspendue jusqu'en juillet et que nous allons rehausser encore davantage les mesures de sécurité dans les aéroports. Nous rationalisons également les arrivées d'outre-mer afin d'être mieux en mesure de les contrôler. Earlier today, ministers Blair, Haidu and Garneau announced that Canada has advised Canadians to curtail non-essential international travel and that the cruise season is suspended until July and that we are bringing in additional screening measures at airports. We are also streamlining overseas arrivals to be better positioned for, for screening. Yesterday, we saw many provinces take strong steps to keep people safe. They are doing what needs to be done to protect the public, and I want to thank them for their exemplary work. 
Later today, I will have a call with the premiers and indigenous leaders to discuss the latest developments and coordinate our efforts, including the over billion dollar COVID-19 response fund, which provides money to the provinces and territories to support preparation and mitigation. These are significant steps and we will do more. The provinces and territories are facing various levels of risk, but we will make sure that we align our response across the country. Addressing COVID-19 must be a Team Canada effort. To keep Canadians safe, to mitigate the economic impacts of the virus, all levels of government are working together. We are talking regularly. We are coordinating our efforts. We are following the situation very closely and we are pulling out all the stops. I know that you're worried. You're worried about your health, about your family's health, about your job, your savings, about paying rent, about the kids not being in school. I know that you're concerned about uncertainty in the global economy. The steps being taken to keep you safe have an economic impact. But what is also true is that we are in the enviable position of having significant fiscal firepower available to support you. This is in addition to the measures we've already taken. The Finance Minister is also in constant communication with his international counterparts to find ways to work together to mitigate the impacts of the virus on the global economy. He will have further announcements shortly this afternoon. The agreement we reached with other parties to suspend the House today also still gives us the flexibility to do the things we need to do in order to support Canadians. No one should have to worry about paying rent, buying groceries or additional childcare because of COVID-19. We will help Canadians financially. The Government of Canada will be introducing a significant fiscal stimulus package in the days ahead. Le gouvernement du Canada annoncera des mesures de relance fiscale importantes au cours des prochains jours. Je sais que vous êtes nombreux à être inquiets. Inquiets pour votre santé et la santé de votre famille. On fait tout ce qu'on doit faire pour protéger notre économie et nous nous trouvons dans une position fiscale avantageuse. Tous les ordres de gouvernement travaillent ensemble pour freiner la propagation du virus. Les entreprises et les citoyens comme vous prennent des précautions. Nous avons ici au Canada des services et des professionnels de la santé incroyables qui font présentement un travail incroyable. Every order of government is working to stop the spread of the virus. Businesses and citizens are taking precautions. We have, an outstanding, we have outstanding public health authorities who are doing an outstanding job. We will get through this together. Merci tout le monde. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Louis Blouin de Radio-Canada. Vous avez évoqué des mesures pour limiter le nombre de voyageurs étrangers qui arrivent au Canada. Est-ce que vous pouvez être plus précis, s'il vous plaît, à quoi vous pensez? Est-ce que c'est limiter le nombre de vols? Est-ce que c'est cibler des euh, pays en particulier? Il y a beaucoup de gens qui s'inquiètent peut-être que ça arrive comme ça euh, d'un autre pays. Qu'est-ce que vous voulez faire précisément? On est en train de travailler sur les mesures précises, mais je peux vous dire que on va euh, réduire le nombre d'aéroports qui acceptent euh, des travailleurs outre-mer pour mieux procéder à, à l'évaluation et au processus euh, qui vont s'assurer de, 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 de la sécurité des Canadiens. On regarde aussi euh, par rapport aux origines des vols et aux, aux déplacements pour voir euh, s'il y a d'autres étapes à prendre. Et on va continuer de travailler à tous les jours pour s'assurer que les Canadiens soient en sécurité. Uh, we are looking to reduce the number of airports that will accept travelers uh, from overseas in order to be able to give the proper resources on all arrivals uh, to ensure that we're doing everything we can to keep Canadians and Canada safe. We're also obviously looking at uh, countries of origin and further measures that we can take. We will make those decisions based on the best science, the best recommendations of our health officials. 
Est-ce que ça fait partie de vos options de fermer complètement les frontières à certains pays? Et si oui, quels sont vos critères pour en arriver là? Et là aussi, je vous demanderais d'être précis. Est-ce que c'est un nombre de cas au Canada, un niveau de contamination communautaire, etc.? Euh, nos critères d'évaluation pour les prochaines décisions sont entièrement basés sur les recommandations des experts et les autorités en santé publique. Euh, nous faisons confiance aux experts ici au Canada et à travers le monde et nous allons suivre leurs recommandations. Euh, nous ne fermons pas la porte à toute euh, prochaine étape. Nous regardons qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire pour continuer à faire le travail que nous faisons depuis des semaines pour garder les Canadiens en sécurité et ça va continuer. Okay. Uh, we uh, will continue to make decisions based on recommendations of uh, medical experts, public health authorities, and uh, top scientists. We understand uh, that we have taken significant measures over the past weeks and month uh, to ensure that Canadians are kept safe and to slow the spread of the virus. We will continue to make determinations about how best to do that based on uh, recommendations of experts. Uh, we're not closing the door to uh, any further steps, but we will make those decisions based on what science tells us. Uh, Ryan Tumulty, National Post, sir. Uh, the financial markets have had two of their worst days on record this week. I'm just wondering, you talk about the government's fiscal, fiscal power. Why haven't we used it yet, and what are you planning to do? Uh, two days ago, we announced a billion-dollar uh, plan to help uh, invest in uh, health uh, and support Canadians across the country. Uh, we've also put forward measures uh, that will strengthen EI and uh, help Canadians. We recognize there is much more to do. We do not want any Canadian to have to worry about whether or not they're going to be able to pay their rent, whether or not they're going to be able uh, to buy groceries or care for their kids we, or, or, or uh, elderly family members. We need to make sure that Canadians have the options and the ability to follow the best public health advice and keep themselves safe. That is what we are focused on and we will be rolling out those measures in the coming days. The Finance Minister will make uh, further announcements uh, later today on uh, concrete uh, measures to support our economy. But further to that, in my conversations with my fellow G7 leaders, uh, we have agreed that it will be important for us to coordinate uh, at a G7 level to uh, impact uh, the global economy. And we will be continuing to follow up on those conversations in the coming days as well direct financial payments to Canadians or to affected industries? Uh, we are looking at ways to help Canadians directly, yes. Uh, particularly vulnerable Canadians who are going to be particularly squeezed if uh, they uh, don't get, uh, uh, aren't able to go to work. Uh, these are the kinds of things we're focused on. We also know that small businesses uh, may uh, struggle through or will struggle uh, through this uh, period of economic slowdown of uh, people uh, choosing to stay at home and protect their families. We will look at how to support them so that uh, once we get through this difficult time, our uh, economy and Canadians will continue to prosper. Okay. Uh, nous regardons comment on va aider directement les Canadiens qui seraient uh, dans des situations plus difficiles ou uh, l'absence d'un chèque de paye pour avoir des conséquences uh, extrêmes sur leur capacité de payer leur loyer, de s'occuper de, de, de leurs enfants ou des aînés uh, ou, de, ou de mettre uh, de, de la nourriture sur la table. Donc, nous allons prendre des mesures directes pour appuyer les Canadiens qui font face à des difficultés à ce point-là. Nous allons aussi chercher à aider nos petites et moyennes entreprises qui euh, vont faire face à, à des semaines difficiles pendant qu'on répond à cette, cette menace euh, à la santé publique. Euh, nous allons annoncer des mesures cet après-midi par le ministre de, de la, des Finances, mais aussi euh, en début de semaine prochaine euh, par, euh, avec d'autres mesures pour directement aider les Canadiens. Hello, Prime Minister. Catherine Cullen, CBC News. Uh, obviously, we wish good health to all Canadians. But if you are to fall ill, members of your cabinet, for instance, what is the plan for governing? Uh, we have uh, continued to engage. I've been very busy both yesterday and today. Uh, we'll continue uh, to work 
uh, from home uh, remotely to uh, do the important things that need to be done to keep Canadians safe. We have uh, an exceptional cabinet that is uh, working hard on all these issues as well. Uh, we have extraordinary public servants who are working as well. Uh, we will uh, continue to do the work that needs to be done uh, to keep Canadians safe while fo following all directions by our public health officials. I don't, I don't think that indicates whether there's a contingency plan in place if you were to fall sick. I'm also curious why public health officials have told you you don't need to be tested. Um, first of all, there uh, have always been uh, contingency plans uh, for uh, ministers who are, are, are sick or have, uh, or even a prime minister who is, uh, who is uh, fallen ill. Uh, we will continue to follow all those correct contingency plans. But as I said, for now, I am continuing to work extremely hard from home. Um, in terms of uh, advice I've gotten from medical professionals, it was expl explained to me uh, that uh, as long as I do not show any symptoms at all, uh, there is no value in having me tested. Je suis les indications des experts en santé publique qui expliquent que tant et aussi longtemps que je n'aurai pas du tout de symptômes du coronavirus, ça ne sert à rien de me tester pour le coronavirus. Mais justement, là-dessus, il y a des Canadiens qui se posent peut-être la question. Vous êtes un homme en forme, on le sait, vous pourriez avoir la COVID-19, mais pas avoir de symptômes du tout. Vous êtes le premier ministre, vous partagez toujours la même maison que Mme Grégoire Trudeau. Pourquoi ne vous faites pas tester systématiquement à tous les jours en tant que premier ministre? Euh, les, les conseils des experts et des médecins, euh, c'est que euh, si je ne euh, démontre pas de, euh, ou je ne ressens aucun symptôme, ça ne sert à rien de me tester. Madame Grégoire Trudeau, de ce qu'on a compris, est revenue de Londres samedi dernier ou le week-end dernier. Euh, vous avez rencontré plein de gens au cours de la semaine, notamment à Toronto lundi également euh, à Ottawa euh, toute la semaine. Vous ne craignez pas avoir été un vecteur de transmission cette semaine? Euh, on a euh, parlé euh, de ça justement avec les experts en santé publique et le fait que je n'ai pas de symptômes, je ne démontre aucun symptôme euh, de la COVID, euh, et, veut dire que euh, je, selon eux et, et selon ce qu'on comprend, euh, il n'y a pas de risque pour les gens avec qui j'aurais travaillé pendant cette semaine. In English, please. Okay. Uh, according to health officials, the fact that I have expressed absolutely no symptoms means that anyone I engaged with throughout this week uh, has not been put at risk. Marika Walsh with The Globe and Mail. I'm wondering, given the warnings that Canada is now giving about traveling abroad, Should Canadians still be traveling between provinces, between cities, given how different the virus is spreading within Canada? I think uh, people uh, need to make responsible decisions and uh, check with their uh, medical professionals and check uh, their own travel plans in terms of what makes sense for them. I know that uh, Canadians will uh, listen to the advice of experts and make decisions that are appropriate for them and for their family. And can you describe specifically what your self-isolation means, both for you and your family and your wife? You're, you're outside right now. Uh, is your wife still going outside? Is your family still going outside? What does self-isolation actually mean for your family? Uh, we, as, as are uh, many, many Canadians right now, following very carefully the advice that public health professionals are uh, telling us in terms of uh, what we can do and what we shouldn't do. So what does that mean? Uh, That means uh, uh, I am in isolation, as are my, uh, my children, and my wife is in quarantine. Uh, Glenn McGregor, CTV News. Prime Minister, in your conversation with uh, President Trump yesterday, was there any discussion about future access of Canadians to cross the U.S. border, and uh, it, should the situation worsen? And also, do you have any concerns, given the U.S. slow response to this, about Americans coming here? Uh, we have been working very closely with our counterparts in the United States to coordinate uh, our, uh, our efforts at the border and to align our efforts. Uh, there is certainly uh, ongoing conversations that will continue to be have as the situation evolves, but I am confident we will continue to be able to work very closely uh, with the Americans to keep uh, people in North America safe, particularly to keep Canadians safe. Uh, on that, I, it is uh, uh, worth noting that it was Uh, one piece of good news that comes out of this situation is that the uh, new NAFTA has now been fully passed and ratified and is now awaiting royal assent, which should happen very quickly.
Just following on my colleague's question, could you describe your situation domestically here in a little more detail? Is your wife here in this house? Are all three kids here? And if so, a uh, question a lot of Canadians are dealing with is how are you going to keep them occupied for the next two weeks? Uh, most of the morning the kids have been doing Lego and uh, the, uh, my wife has been on the phone uh, to uh, friends and family. Uh, I have been uh, on the phone uh, with uh, President Macron, with Cabinet, with uh, officials and members of my team as we work to keep Canadians safe. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Theresa Wright from the Canadian Press. Um, what is your single biggest concern about Canada's preparedness at this point? Um, my concern is that Canadians uh, continue to follow the uh, directions of public health authorities. Uh, we have to be alert and responsible. We don't want to panic, but we don't want to take this uh, too lightly either. Finding that middle ground is always going to be challenging, but I have tremendous confidence that Canadians are going to be able to. And what are you telling your children about the heightened sense of concern uh, in the country? And also, how are you explaining some of the political decisions that you're making? Um, we are obviously having some very good conversations with our kids about what's going on, about uh, how not to be overly concerned, but to be a little bit concerned, which is obviously why uh, they are uh, they are home uh, home today with us. We're going to continue to have uh, thoughtful conversations as parents across the country will be having with their kids. Last question. Prime Minister, good afternoon. Uh, Bruce Campion Smith, The Star. Just wondering if you'd w walk us through the logic that, that Canada has not gone, taken the step of restricting your international travels. Is, you know, that, our, that we don't agree with perhaps the science in those countries or the experts in those countries that advocate for such a move? Uh, different countries will have uh, experts that give them advice that is suitable for uh, their own situation. Uh, we have uh, followed the instructions and the advice and the recommendations of our top public health officials. Uh, we will recall that in the uh, a number of weeks ago, in the beginnings, there was discussion of whether or not we should uh, entirely close our borders to China the way the United States did. Uh, we did not, and we were able to manage it uh, in a way that, that allowed for uh, control and a non-spread uh, non of the virus that gives us confidence that uh, our public health officials are giving us the right uh, recommendations for Canada. And on, on the fiscal stimulus package that's coming out, can you just describe to Canada, how will that, is that in, in, in place of the budget? Is, is this kind of a series of what we could expect now through the, the end of this crisis? Um, we are obviously focused uh, primarily on how we are going to get uh, money into the pockets of Canadians who will need it because of this situation. Uh, we've had many, many discussions over the past months about the budget. Those, that work will continue, but our focus right now is on ensuring uh, that Canadians have uh, have uh, the, 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 the resources uh, and the money to not have to uh, stress about rent and about groceries and about child care and elder care uh, at a time where they're also very worried about their health and their family's health. We will be supporting uh, the economy and Canadians through this time. Uh, notre priorité maintenant demeure à la santé et le bien-être des Canadiens. Nous, avons, nous voulons qu'aucun Canadien ne soit préoccupé par la capacité de payer le loyer ou de, de, de pouvoir nourrir leurs enfants ou s'occuper des, des aînés. Nous allons faire tout ce qui est nécessaire pour les aider pendant ces moments difficiles. Évidemment, Les réflexions qu'on a depuis des, des semaines et des mois sur le budget euh, 